What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to another FM16 video and today I'm going to be giving you guys a countdown of my top 5 unusual leagues to manage in this year in Football Manager. Like many people I enjoy managing in England and particularly in the Premier League, arguably the biggest league in the world. However, I feel like there's a load of leagues in Football Manager that just don't get the love they deserve and in this video I'm going to be giving you and bringing you guys 5 leagues from around the globe with slightly different rules in every single one. Each one has kind of its own standout factor. Uh, if you like the description and how I sell any of these leagues, be sure to start a save with, with them. Let me know how you get on with them down in the comments. And other than that, if you enjoyed this video, smash the like button. If you're new here, subscribe. And let's get into this countdown. Coming in at the number 5 spot in this countdown is the Gibraltarian First Division. If you don't know, Gibraltar is the peninsula off the south coast of Spain. It's a nation which recently gained access into UEFA, allowing the national team to compete at a continental level in Europe. However, they're yet to gain access to FIFA, meaning they can't attempt to qualify for a World Cup. Gibraltar is of course a really, really small nation. As you can see, their first division consists of 8 teams. In this division, each team plays each other twice, meaning you only play 14 games a season in the league. There's a number of other domestic competitions which accompany this country, and as a result, you'll end up playing around 20 to 25 games a season depending on your level of success. There's also the second flight in this league with more teams if you fancy more of a challenge. Beware, however, that some of these teams act as second teams for teams in the first division, and as a result, can't be promoted. Now this league may not be in the base game of FM 2016. In the last two years it's been a Steam Workshop download you can download for free. It's an official add-on and hopefully SI will be bringing it back for Football Manager 2016. The league's really fun. As you can see here Lincoln Gibraltar have absolutely dominated the league and it can make for a really fun challenge to try and overthrow what has now been an 11 year spell of dominance. In FM 2014 I actually had a really successful save in Gibraltar where I went on to win two Champions Leagues over the course of about 25 years. It's a really long term save and if you want a massive massive challenge I can't recommend this league enough. You're going to be grinding it out, getting pummeled in Europe because you do get a chance to qualify for the Champions League by finishing first and the Europa League by finishing second. But with a lot of grinding, some success, you'll be able to bring in players eventually from abroad, hopefully progress in Europe and overall increase the overall standard of not only the national team but also the league itself. It's a fun challenge, one that's long term. But if you want to have a very unique experience of managing a semi-pro team in a really semi-pro league, but with that outside chance of continental competition, it's a pretty fun change of pace. Coming in at the number 4 spot in my countdown of the top 5 obscure leagues in Football Manager is the ABSA Premiership or the South African Premier Soccer League. This is the top flight in South Africa. It's a fairly standard league in general terms. The thing that really makes it unique is the fact it's the only African domestic division playable in FM 2015 and presumably 2016. The league is kind of exciting because of the fact you get to compete in the African Champions League. Looking at the league here, you can see there are 16 teams in total. The bottom team are relegated. The team who finish 15th in the division, second from bottom, go into a league format, which is a little bit different, with the teams who finish second and third in the South African National First Division. Each team in this kind of free team league play each other twice, with the team who finish top staying up or gaining promotion into the top flight. In terms of continental competition, the two, top two teams qualify for the African Champions League, with the team who finishes third qualifying for the equivalent of the UEFA Cup. This league's pretty unique in terms of the fact you get an opportunity to try and win the African Champions League. The actual division itself is very competitive with teams like Sundown, Kaiser Chief, Orlando Pirates and Super Sport all winning the league fairly recently. It's not like there's been one team really dominating. The league rules themselves aren't too crazy. There's a maximum of five foreign players, but the fact you're managing in South Africa means you're often relying on the nation's talent and often encountering players which you wouldn't otherwise see in Football Manager saves. Coming up next in my top 5 obscure leagues to manage in, in FM16, is the Chinese Super League. This is a division that I actually came across during my Pentagon Challenge. I had great fun playing in this division, and it's a division that over the last few years has become increasingly more reputable in the world, with a few big players ending up playing in this league, such as Varna Love playing for Shandong, and also Paulinho, formerly of Tottenham Hotspur, playing for Guangzhou. So... What makes this league different? Well, the first thing is that this league is pretty st standard in terms of the format. You have one champion, two teams get relegated, the season actually runs between January and November, and you play 30 games, playing each team twice. 
Guangzhou in recent years are a team who have slowly started to take over the league. With huge financial investment being a club in China, they've been able to bring some massive players to their side that simply are too good for other teams in the division. However, of course with China there's plenty of money going around and so there are some other teams in this division that have background sugar daddies. Sugar daddies in FM are chairman who provide your team with a lot of money. Guangzhou have a foreground chairman. This means that he puts a lot of money into the club every season. The following teams however in China have background sugar daddies meaning that if you bring success to the club they're likely to reward you for your success with increased transfer budgets and more wage budget. These teams are Beijing, Fully, Renhei, Jiangsu, Mainzu and Shandong. All these teams have pretty healthy finances as a result of their final financial situation and could be good, stiff competition for Guangzhou. If you really want a challenge in this division, you can also play as one of the clubs in either the second tier, the Chinese National First Division, and attempt to take them up the ranks and take on the financial giants in the league above. It's a fun league all in all, and the only real obscure rules to be aware of are the limitations on foreign players. You can't have a non-Asian or non-Chinese goalkeeper, you have to have a Chinese goalkeeper, and you're only allowed five foreign players, four of which um, can only be from outside of Asia. This league's pretty fun, and because of the restriction on the fact you have to have a Chinese goalkeeper, you can build an incredible team, but still be letting in a fair few goals through no fault of your own. As I mentioned, it's a league with some growing reputation, and you can definitely reflect this in FM, and you also have the option to try and win the Asian Champions League. Coming in at the number two spot in this countdown is perhaps the biggest league in this list. It's the Argentine Premier Division. Now, you need to ignore what's on your screen here because this is the FM 2015, and Argentina had a complete overhaul of its footballing system for this season. So, as of the 2015 season, the top flight consists of 30 teams who all play each other once, as well as one bonus rivalry game where two teams in the division play an extra game against one another because the kind of match is of some significance, resulting in 30 games a season. The top two Two teams in this division qualify for the Copa Libertadores, the South American Champions League. The team who win the Copa Argentina, I believe it's called, which is the equivalent of the FA Cup, also qualify for the Copa Libertadores. Then the teams who finish third to sixth in the league of 30 teams compete in a kind of standard, standard playoff with a semi-final and then final to decide the fourth team that gets a berth to the Copa Libertadores. From that, the losing teams in that playoff, as well as the teams from 7th to 18th, yes, 18th, go into a massive playoff, whereby there's another playoff to get spots for the equivalent of the UEFA League. Bottom line is, if you finish 18th or higher out of 30 teams, you have a chance of continental competition. Not only is this division one of the biggest leagues in the kind of playable FM league database in terms of just the sheer quantity of teams, it's also the one which seems to have the most teams competing for continental football. It's an exciting league. I should point out that this is part of a massive league restructure in Argentina, and over, I believe it's the first four seasons, the number of teams in the division slowly gets whittled down to 24, but if you've never had the opportunity to manage in South America, the new format, the fact there's 30 teams playing against one another, and also the fact it's just a really competitive division, and a very strong division in the continent, make it a really fun, slightly different save, especially for you to try out in Football Manager 2016. Coming in at the number one spot in my top five obscure leagues to manage in in FM16 is Mexico and Liga MX, the top flight. This league is kind of different to every other league in FM, and as a result, somewhat daunting when you first play in it. I'm going to leave a link to a Wikipedia entry explaining the rules in detail. I'm going to go over them really briefly here. So since 1995, the league has been divided into two separate seasons per calendar year. The opening season, which runs between July and December, and then the closing season, which runs between January and I believe May. So you have two seasons a year lasting five months. As you can see, in this table, there are 18 teams. In each opening and closing stage, 
each team plays each other once, so you play a 17 game season. The top 8 teams after 17 games play each other in a playoff format where 8th plays 1st, 2nd plays 7th etc. The quarterfinals and the semi-finals of this playoff are over 2 legs, with the final being over 1 leg. The winner of the final is crowned that stage's champion. So there's 2 championships a year in both the opening and closing stages. The thing that also makes Mexico unique is not just this league format, but also the fact you actually have the ability to qualify for the North and South American Champions Leagues as a Mexican club. To qualify for the North American Champions League, you simply have to reach the final of the playoffs in either the opening or closing stage of a season. If you reach the final in a calendar year, you've got yourself a spot. In order to qualify for the South American Champions League, you have to have the best record or one of the best records in the opening season, which runs between July and December, but not reach the final. The two teams with the best record in the Apertura season or opening stage are those that qualify for the South American Champions League. There's also one other Mexican spot in that competition, that's awarded to the team that wins the Supercopa MX. In Mexico, like with the league having kind of two seasons a year, there is also an FA Cup in the opening and an FA Cup in the closing season. The winners of the opening and closing cup in each half of the year take each other on in the Supercopa MX, with the winner getting a spot in the Copa Lipidadores. As I said, unique format. Hopefully I explained that briefly, quickly. I tried earlier. It lasted about 10 minutes, so I wanted to keep it short and snappy. As I said, I'll leave a Wikipedia link down in the description. Don't let that put you off this league. The league itself is actually rather easy to get used to once you kind of get your head around some of the rules. The league itself, in terms of the actual kind of squad registration rules, is fairly straightforward, with the only rule being you can only have five foreign players in your side. Liga MX is the biggest and highest reputation competition in North America, allowing you to attract in a lot of good talent because the league is made up of a number of teams and you have two seasons a year in the opening and closing seasons it remains very very competitive and is extremely fun to play in i actually quite enjoy leagues with shorter seasons and with this having the ability for you to win two different champions leagues as the same club which i believe is the only league that you can do that in in football manager 2016 it's extremely extremely fun to play and i can't recommend it enough Anyway guys, that wraps up today's video on the top 5 unusual leagues, in my opinion, in Football Manager 2016. If you enjoyed this video, smash the like button. If any of these leagues stood out to you, let me know which did down in the comments. If you've managed in them before, let me know which teams you managed in the divisions that I've mentioned in today's video. If there's any divisions as well that you think I've forgotten because there's a lot of leagues in Football Manager, I've not played in every single one, let me know which of those are your favourites down in the comments too. If you're new here, subscribe. If you want to see some more FM16 content, there's going to be plenty coming your way when the game fully releases anyway that is all from me thank you so much for watching as always guys and it is me jack and i'll talk to you guys in a bit i'm out